Hey guys, welcome to this video. This is uh, Jerry Handy Sr. with DairyHandy.com. I wanted to share quickly uh, an overview of the sales process or what we call the sales funnel. I'm going to grab my pen here real quick and kind of get started here. As you can see here, this is the sales funnel. This is where it all starts. First and foremost, what you want is to look at and look for targeted traffic. Now you can get targeted traffic from a number of different locations. I just chose to pick uh, just a few, kind of give you a brief view. SEO, media buys, social networks, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, solo ads, articles, forms, PPC or pay-per-click from one of the big search engines, Google, Yahoo, and Bing, and of course, uh, articles. Articles can be written and posted on a number of different sites out there in order to drive traffic. If you write good quality content, people will start looking for you, looking for your offers and what it is that you want to share with them. Okay, that's step number one. Secondly, you want to direct this targeted traffic to, uh, personally, my personal preference is to my blog. The reason I say blog is because you want to make sure that once you get them there, that you want to start developing relationships. A lot of things. They'll get to know, like, and trust you here. Okay? You can share some of your strategies here. You can teach them some things. They're going to get valuable information from you, so that's going to make them get to know, like, and trust you more. And also, from the blog, you can add a banner uh, to the side panel of your page or your blog um, for them to be able to click to get to your squeeze page. Now, the squeeze page is a what we also call a lead capture page. So they'll leave the personal blog, and they'll go to your squeeze page or your lead capture page. Once they're there at the squeeze page, or your leads capture page, this thing has got to be highly converting. That means it's got to have a pretty good persuasive offer for them to want to opt in, to leave their name and their email address. Okay? Very persuasive. Notice they left from the blog. They've got to know you. Now they come into the squeeze page, and they know you from your blog, so therefore they're going to be more willing to opt in to receive what it is that this good teacher, this instructor, this person who really cares for them and sharing valuable content right here, they're going to be willing to give you their information because you've warmed them up here. So they leave from the squeeze page, and from the squeeze page, they're going to go to your sales page. Typically, your sales page can be something that you're offering yourself, or it could be an affiliate offer. So your product or an affiliate offer. And there are thousands of ways to get affiliate offers uh, out there on the web. And I'll show you in just a second. Okay, so they get you to the sales page and now from the sales page, once they choose to buy, they're going to be taken to an order page. And that order page, of course, for the most part, can be products through ClickBank, one shopping cart you can set up yourself. If you're partnering up with the JV, they're going to use their shopping cart. Could be pay.com or whatever the case is. And of course, if it's your own product, you can use services like PayPal. That, of course, you're going to pay a little small percentage to PayPal in order for them to process uh, your requests. And also, you can set up your own merchant account. And that's that gets a little deep, but you can actually get that set up as well. So you can start, you know, accessing funds, taking credit cards, and things like that. You got to apply for these merchant card accounts, but they're not that difficult to actually get approved. So that's once they get to the order page. Once they get the order page, of course, you take them to uh, the page where they can get the product, so forth and so on, and you're good to go. Now let's just say that they got to the squeeze page and they didn't want to go through to the sales page, so they've opted in. So once they opt in, what happens is They'll go to, once you have your autoresponder set up, they'll bypass your sales page. It's just, hey, they did that. They'll go to your autoresponder, which your autoresponder, of course, is going to give them back what it is that they requested. It was your free offer, whatever that is. That free offer is what you want to make sure you get to them. Okay? Now, in the process of them getting the free offer, your autoresponder series is going to be set up. So you're going to continually build a relationship with these individuals. So this is what happened. Once they get to the autoresponder, you're going to give them a link to the free offer or the download page. You're going to continue to build a relationship because now 
you can not only send them back to the sales page, but you can also send them back to your personal blog. When you're writing some more good quality content, continue building a relationship, sharing some things and strategies, some tips uh, that can help them in their primary business, and they're going to even uh, want to do uh, want to know more about you uh, as time progresses and moves forward. Okay, so you can send them back to the sales page as well from the autoresponder. Okay, autoresponder is your 24-hour a day virtual secretary that's doing it for you. Okay, and this process you can be sending anywhere from five to seven follow-up messages all on autopilot. This is doing it automatically from your autoresponder. And typically, I've used both of these services, and they're both pretty much com uh, comparable. From that standpoint, they all run about the same amount each month, so it's no big deal as either a whoever or get response. But this typically is the flow of the sales funnel, and this is what most marketers out there on the internet already have in place. Now, this is a pretty simple and basic uh, sales funnel process. It could get a little bit more elaborate, some upsells and downsells, things that you can add in around the order page uh, area. But this basically gives you a simple overview as to how and what takes place when someone goes through the sales process. So to recap, targeted traffic, of course, in your niche, whatever it is that you're desiring to sell, you want to make sure you target those individuals. They go from the source, wherever the source is, and we saw the sources, all of these are the sources, okay, into your personal blog, from your personal blog to the squeeze page or the lead capture page, from the lead capture page to the sales page, from the sales page, of course, which is very pers persuasive, to the order page. From the order page, uh, then they're going to go to, of course, to get their product that they requested and that they received, that they pay for. They're going to get that. That's going to come either from uh, the JV partner or the company or whatever uh, that you represent if you're affiliate marker or if it's you, you've got the product set up uh, on your server that they can actually have a link to get it downloaded. And if they choose not to go to the sales page and just opt in and go uh, to get their product, their free offer, then you're just going to follow up with them uh, via your autoresponder, uh, send them back to your personal blog, continue the relationship, or send them back to the sales page so that they can uh, you know, have an opportunity to buy the product that you are offering to them to help them in their situation or a solution to their problem. So. Any questions, comments, feedback, please leave them below. I wanted to share this quick overview with you to show you exactly how a sales funnel or a sales process works online. Till next time, Jerry Hendy Sr. signing out from jerryhendy.com. Take care.